introducing the Vosteed Rook, the first collaboration flashlight between Raylight and Vosteed. It's EDC focused, featuring three Nishia 519A LEDs or Cree emitters, a USB-C rechargeable 18350, battery, and a choice of five colors, red, blue, black, gray, and orange. What I have here is a prototype. It's in a bead blasted aluminum that's raw, and it's got a clip from a different Raylite on it. The production clip will be different. This is a Kickstarter project that's already funded, but joining it is the best way to get a Rook early at a discount. Hurry though, because the campaign ends January 3rd, 2023. Full disclosure, I helped Vosteed make a video for the campaign, and the link below is an affiliate link that will help the channel. Due to this and a few changes with the design here, this won't be a complete full review, but it'll be pretty close. And thanks to Vosteed for sending this to me to look at, review, and produce a video with. Packaging and accessories. My prototype here was too early to have any of the packaging you'll get. That said, I bought several Vosteed knives and the packaging that they come with is fantastic and I expect no different here from the Rook. Yours will come with an 18350 battery, USB-C recharging on board, and if the campaign reaches $30,000, you also get an EDC pouch and a Vosteed patch. So let's take a look at the construction and design. The Rook is made from aluminum and will be anodized in a number of colors, initially red, blue, black, gray, and orange. The design takes inspiration from the Rook chess piece and it features seven places for tritium. You've got the four around the tail there and then the production light's gonna have three on the actual button itself. Button here is our mechanical reverse clicky switch here. And similar to other ray lights, it's the same type of switch that other ray lights have, but it's a better feel. The side to side play is less and up and down, it's a more positive feel with a little bit more pressure to activate it. I don't think accidental activations will be an issue here. The light does tail stand without an issue. It is a three piece design. You've got this part unscrews and you've got a body section here and then a head section. I won't unscrew it because this clip doesn't uh, fit and it will scratch the body for me but I do have some pictures of the inside. The light uses the standard steel flame style clip, as you can see here. As I mentioned, this is a clip from the Raylight Dawn. Same clip here. The production light's gonna have a little bit different clip. I imagine it'll be a little bit shorter so that it rests against the body tube here so you can unscrew it without scratching the light. It allows for a pretty reasonably deep carry here and it serves as an attachment point too. In the hand, it's pretty decent. I can kind of wrap a finger around it it's short, it's not meant to be a huge light, but there's no texture there. I think it does an adequate job for grip. Certainly not like the frag design of other ray lights, but I think that's okay here. Up at the front, you have a smooth bezel. You've got a sapphire lens, so supreme durability and clarity. And then you've got a TIR optic underneath. The result is a pretty nice beam profile. As you can see there, very even hot spot, and we'll get into that more in here in a minute. I'll grade the light, it's easy to modify as well if you're looking to put different emitters in it or de-dome them or something like that. It just unscrews from the back of the light here. So with a pair of tweezers or whatever, you can get inside really easily here. Size and weight. My prototype's gonna have a little bit of differences from production on size and weight. I know the production light's gonna be slightly longer and have a different clip, as I mentioned. Uh, it'll have a battery, different battery, and will be anodized. So I won't give a weight here. The diameter is 24 millimeters and the current length is 74 millimeters. The light's IPX68 water rated here. I did minimal water testing, but I did uh, dunk it in a uh, container of water and no issues. For user interface, the Rook is using the same interface that the Raylite Pineapple Mini and uh, LANs use. It has four programmable modes with different brightness outputs. By default, it ships in mode two, which is moon which I have here, very low lumens, one or sub lumen, then 10%, 40%, and 100% output. You can toggle memory mode on or off. It's off by default. And you can also toggle moonlight mode on and off. There is SOS and strobe, but it's only available in programming mode four. And this interface is easy to use once you have the light set to how you like it. When changing modes, I would recommend consulting the manual though. This is our reverse clicky switch as mentioned, so you gotta turn the light on and then little half presses will be used to step up. The Rook comes with two LED choices, the Nisha 519A LED, which is what I have here, and or a Cree XHP High LED. Both are good choices, but for me, I'll be sticking and recommending the Nisha 519A LEDs myself. As mentioned in previous reviews, they're the most popular LED of the year among enthusiasts due to their highly desirable tint, ease of de-doming, high CRI, and an increase in output over previous similar LEDs. It's a home run in my opinion. On my prototype here with the 519As, 
and my opal meter I measured at 3848k tint with an RA of 97 and the tint was very neutral and pleasing in my opinion. These should de-dome nicely too if you even wanted to push the tint rosier. The beam here is very even and a larger hotspot from the TIR reflector with minimal spill. It's ideal for that short range tasks and up to medium range EDC tasks I'd say. On higher mode it does a decent job of lighting things up out to maybe 100 yards or so and the night shots will tell me more about that. A quick note on outputs. I didn't get the claimed outputs in my sample. The peak outputs I saw was just shy of 1400 lumens in my lumen tube. I theorize this is for a few reasons. One, I'm using a prototype and I know there are minor changes to the driver's plan and I'm also not using the battery that was used for testing so there may be some differences there. But the big one here is that given the two LED options that are offered, typically the Cree XHP-L high LEDs will have more output than the Nisha LEDs will. I have in my example so I assume that's the bulk of it. I have the Vostid Rook prototype with me here. This is the Nisha 219A version, 4000 Kelvin, about 98 CRI. I have it here. It's in the default mode and I have it here on, I guess I'll call it uh, mode two. Uh, it does have a loop moonlight mode, which is mode one. I can see to the end of the stairs pretty easily, but not a whole lot beyond that. It's a useful mode. Stepping up here is your medium is what I'll call it. It's a four mode group. We can see we can reach the neighbor's shed there but not a whole lot beyond there with my eye. I can see a little bit further, but not a whole lot. And here is high, the highest mode turbo. And we can see the end of the neighbor's fence. This is about 17, 16, 1700 lumens or so. It doesn't throw across the street to the trees there. Overall, a useful beam for EDC, but this is not a thrower. It's not designed to be. That TIR optic keeps it a nice even beam, as you can see there. There's no defined hot spot. It's just kind of a nice even beam pattern. Really a great tint as well. It is winter here, so you can see there's a lot of browns, not a whole lot of things to see a high CRI, but it's a nice pleasing tint. Great LED choice. Here are the heat and runtime graphs. The light sustains its maximum output for around a minute before stepping down and stays above a thousand lumens for a little over two minutes. Starting on turbo, a total runtime was 72 minutes or so, and the maximum temp during this time was a quite warm 75C. I then did a comparison runtime between turbo high and medium modes. High gains you an extra hour or so of runtime. Medium goes out to an impressive nine hours and 20 minutes. Just a quick note on recharging here. As mentioned, the light will be shipping with an 18350 battery that has USB-C on board. I don't have that here. However, I so I wasn't able to test it. I can report the light works with a standard flat top or button top 18350. So that's good for if you want extra batteries or replacement batteries in the future. And the light, light does have reverse polarity protection as, as well as low voltage protection. I'm a big fan of the Ruck. It has the makings of what should be a nice, reasonably affordable EDC light in the 18350 form pack. A great LED choice here with the Nisha 519As and the Cree XHPL high LEDs options for those who want a cooler tint and more output. Combine that with a solid, familiar user interface, and it has the makings of what should be a good all-around EDC light. It's worth noting these are small batch lights from a single maker. While not a true custom, they are CNC produced, and they're likely assembled by just one or two people. Both Vostid and Raylight are small companies with just a handful of employees or a single entrepreneur doing all the work. That said, they both have some of the best customer service I've seen in the industry, and as many of you know, I do a lot of the repairs for Raylight if you've got a light here in the U.S. That you need to send in. Aluminum may turn off some people here, but I think it's really a good material for flashlight despite it not being maybe as cool as titanium. It's really the best in terms of cost, weight, machinability, heat dissipation, and durability. That being said, if the Rook is successful, I wouldn't be surprised if you see it in other materials in the future or maybe an 18650 battery tube to increase the length and runtime. So be on the lookout for a few stretch goals on the campaign too. If you are interested, there will be a link below that does help support the channel if you decide to be a backer on the Kickstarter. And that's going to be your best way to get a hold of the Rook. I really don't know what their production plans are to offer the Rook after the Kickstarter is over. And as always, I'm always interested in what you guys think of this flashlight and if you'll be picking one up. This is likely to be my last video for 2022, but I have lots planned for 2023. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out the next one. Thanks for watching.
Introducing the Rook by Vosteed, the next evolution in EDC flashlights. With its compact design, powerful beam, and durable 6063 aerospace aluminum construction, the Rook is perfect for any situation where a reliable light source is needed. Featuring three Nishia 519A high CRI LEDs, a USB-C rechargeable 18350 battery, and a choice of four colors, red, blue, black, and orange. The Rook is sure to become your go-to flashlight for everyday use. The Rook flashlight is the first collaboration between Raylight and Vosteed, two established brands in their respective industries. Designed with EDC in mind, the Rook is a balanced light of function with unique design to power your daily adventures inside your home, office, or outdoors. The Rook takes its name and some design inspiration from the classic game of chess, a favorite here at Vosteed. Like the chess piece, the Rook is designed to be functionally strong with an improved programmable interface while being a fun addition to your EDC collection. The Rook uses the best premium LEDs on the market currently with the Nisha 519A LEDs in 4000 Kelvin tint. Combined with the TIR optics, you get a large hotspot in the center with a medium amount of spill useful for close range and medium range tasks that you encounter in your daily life. The light also features seven slots for tritium tubes to further customize your own light and add to its uniqueness. Get yours on Kickstarter and be one of the first to receive your Rook with expected shipping in January of 2023. Don't miss out on the future of EDC flashlights and back the Rook today.